you have made exclusively for us. And we thank you for it. This is a day you've made for us, and we will rejoice and be glad in it. Thank you for life, health, and strength. Thank you for waking us up this morning and allowing us to be here in good fellowship. God, we give you the praise. We give you the glory and the honor. Now let the words of our mouth, meditation of our heart be acceptable in your sight. For you are God, our strength, our redeemer. In Jesus' name, amen. amen. God bless your wonderful hearts in the house. You can be seated. We are greatly, greatly blessed. How many are greatly blessed? I, I, I want to first of all thank God for being God. Thank God for my wonderful wife, my family, my family. Glory to God, every one of y'all, family in the house. I, I told God, I said, Lord, I, I know you, you're not a respecter of person, but I love to have a little new life neighborhood. I, glory to God, I like to be close to y'all. I like to be close to the ones I love. We are having a phenomenal time in God. Uh, I, I'm here to let you know if you stay with God, he will take you places you never thought imaginable. And I'm not talking in location in the world. I'm talking about in him. In him. Uh, we have a message we got to share. This is, for, this is detrimental. Uh, I've, I've been really, glory to God, I'd be going on my 41st birthday or something. And uh, yeah, 41st birthday, saved. I'm not talking physical. I'm talking about, I'm talking about births. I'm not talking birth suit. I ain't talking earth suit. I'm talking birth suit. I ain't talking earth suit. I'm talking birth suit. Glory to God. Be 40 years. Not, uh, yeah. 93? I mean, 73? 40 years? I'm somewhere there. After you start getting saved this long, you start. I like to just lose count and just go into eternity. But uh, we're good. I have found out of my tenure of being saved, it's more than a notion. And here's what I mean by that. Uh, as I've been studying God's word more so now than I've ever studied before, uh, when he say take up your cross daily, we, we don't really think about that. I mean, we, we kind of, but he says take up your cross daily, uh, daily. What he's actually saying is he's telling you, you got to be in me daily. I mean, you got you to gotta literally go through a unique transformation. Most of us is living life as best we can. Now, I'm going to share something with you. You're, you're living it moment by moment, not as long. You, we, we're under a misconception that we're living life to an age that we haven't even set a number on. How many know what I'm talking about? You're not sitting here thinking you're going to die today. Amen. Not, how many of y'all sitting here thinking you're going to die today? But you could. Yes. See, so you got to start living life. Little God bless your heart. Like, like you could be seeing him today. Yes. Let me ask you a, a question. I'll ask you a question. What are you going to be doing this time tomorrow? Now, now we say we don't know, but you've already figured in your head what you're going to be doing. Y'all know the truth. See, you ain't, you ain't sitting there thinking, well, you know, I might not be here tomorrow. No, you're not. You're, if you're going to work, you're thinking about, I'm at the job. If you're dealing with your kids, you think I'll be with my kids. You, you ain't thinking, oh, y'all know, go to God. So now we got to help us. God been working with me. I, I want to share this with Crystal. I've been watching more TV and the, 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 most of the preachers don't stand still, Crystal. <laughs> Very few of them. T.D. Jakes, these brothers all over the place. I was looking at McClendon. He, was, he, he ran more than me. I, I mean, I run pretty good, but he was running. But uh, God gave me a phenomenal message area. This isn't a shouting message, it's a reality check. It's really a reality check. Because as much as y'all do know, the devil is on our backs. This world is no joke. You, it's not, we, we tolerate at best, but really the peace in the house ain't there, man. I mean peace that surpasses understanding. Peace that surpasses understanding will only come to you 
when you get your mind stayed, and, and, right. and most of your minds right. are not stayed. Stayed means you got God on your mind. Amen. Amen. And most of us, y'all know the deal. I, I'm, just, I'm just telling you for what I know and what I'm going to share. In the book of Psalms, one, Psalm 107, Psalm 107, Psalm 107. This is the validation of who Jesus is. In Psalms 107, the 20th verse of Psalm 107. The 20th verse of Psalms, the 170th Psalm. The 107th Psalm. If it's 170th, I just put it in there. But it's the 107th Psalm. Uh, there it is. And he sent his what? Words and what did he? Why did he send his word? Yeah. And did what? Delivered from, from what? Their, their destruction. God sent his word to heal us. I want to use uh, for just a subject to deal with the texts that we have is that God sent his word to heal us spiritually, mentally, and physically. He sent his word to heal us, to heal us. In the book of St. Matthew, the fifth chapter, St. Matthew, the fifth chapter. Well, the, the, yeah, the fifth chapter, he began to talk about the Beatitudes. And I'm going to share something with you all here. And seeing the multitude, he went up into the mountain and went, and when he was set, his disciples came unto him, and he opened his mouth and taught them, saying, Blessed are the poor in spirit, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. And, and when I read that, I said, poor. I don't like hearing the word poor, because poor means I'm lacking. It means I don't have. But what he began to say was that blessed are those that realize you ain't saved. <laughs> yeah, I need somebody. I need deliverance. Because I, I'm going to share something with you. When you're locked in pride, you're stupid. That's what the Bible said, the, 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 fifth, the twelfth proverb. It said, you, if, you, if you're locked in pride, you're stupid. And I'm going to share something with you. A lot of times we just walk in pride. And pride comes with the flesh. It's just what it is. Just what it is. You're in the flesh and you're going to walk in pride. And, and it's very easy to go in the flesh. I was driving, and I have to really now. I have to really watch myself because it seems like the older I get, I have to be careful in what I say. Because after a while, you just say you know what's on your mind. Because when you get older, it's just the mind mouth thing. But I said, no, I'm not going to let that be. I'm going to take control of my mouth. God set a guard at my mouth. I don't want anything just coming out of my mouth that I think. But um, person was driving slow, and uh, I mean they were driving real slow. And, uh, but see, God gave me the option to go around instead of staying behind them being upset. Or, I'm going to show you something, or, but this situation, I was driving slow. I was, I was just taking my time, and I forgot what it was. That I had something on my mind, I was driving slow. This individual was riding my bumper. And uh, I'm like, what in, what in the world? Holy Spirit flashed it back to me. Remember when you was the guy on the bumper? Remember you was the bumper guy? And I said, yeah, Lord. He said, he said what you do is pull off and let the man go because you don't know where he's going. See, you don't know what's up. You don't know if it's a situation at the house, late for work or whatever. So what I did, I pulled off. Instead of me getting tight, I pulled off. See, I'm not going to let folk dictate my joy. See, I'm not going to let you steal my joy because, see, the Holy Ghost has come. But see, I'm going to tell you something. God is talking. He's talking to us, church. The problem is we ain't got enough word to hear it. He said, my sheep know my voice and a stranger. So if you're listening to a stranger, God love you. You know the deal. So he was talking to these, and he opened his mouth, and he was saying, blessed are the poor, and I'm going to read this quick because i got some stuff to cover. Blessed are they that mourn, for they shall be comforted. Blessed are the meek, for they shall inherit the earth. That meek is not this earth. You're not going to inherit this earth. 
I'm here to let you know you're not inheriting this. Matter of fact, what would you do with it if you got it? Amen. So polluted, it's so out of sort, so blood ridden, it's so corrupt. We don't, I don't want this. I want the new deal. You know what I'm saying? Look, you, I, God said, bless it on the meek for they shall inherit. Now I'm going to let you in on a secret. You, you're going to go to heaven, but you're going to live down here. For those that think they're going to stay in heaven, no, that ain't where you're going to live. God did not call us to live in heaven. That's where he lives. That's why he's bringing New Jerusalem down to earth. That's where we're going to live. But I got news for you, glory to God. This is going to be a place that you don't mind living. All right, come on. You ain't got to lock your doors. You ain't going to have to walk to your mansion and have no ADT, no alarm system. <laughs> Amen. Oh, glory to God. I just had a flash in my spirit. God is going to set this thing up so nice. Now, here's what's good. You ain't got to have no morticians, no undertakers, no graveyards. Because there ain't going to be no death. And then, oh, glory to God. We're going to be eating. For those that like to eat, you're going to eat and ain't gain no weight. You can eat to your heart's content. Oh, glory to God. When Jesus said, I'm going to drink this, this, the, the communion cup new, I'm telling you, could you imagine that drink? So I'm pretty excited about the new heaven, the new earth, the meek, glory to God. But meek doesn't mean weak. Meek, meek means you can tolerate. Meek means you ain't got to show, you ain't got to represent. You can just know who you are. How many, when you know who you are, you don't, it don't mind. What people say about you, because you know who you are. It's when you don't know who you are, that's when it bothers you. Because if you don't know who you are, you, you believe what people are saying. If you act like, you know. You know, he's a knucklehead, and you that who called me a knucklehead. See? <laughs> Amen. I told y'all, took me a whole lot of time. But first of all, I'm not black, white, or indifferent. I'm a child of God. When you, when you brand yourself with a child of God, you ain't got to worry about what color you are and the texture of your hair or whatever. I'm a child of God. That means I look like him. And the way if I can look like him, I'm good to go. You know, the Jews, Jesus ain't had no problem with people talking about him. He said something quick. He said, who do men say that I am? Just to see what y'all saying. John the Baptist. Some say this. He said, but who do you say that I am? Peter said, Peter had a revelation from God. He said, thou art the Christ. Amen. Now, I'm going to show you something here. This is deep. He said, thou art the Christ. You ever? And then right at the time of, the, of crucial press, he, didn't, he couldn't recognize him because he was walking in fear. When you walk in fear, you'll forget who Jesus is. Remember, he was pressed up against the wall. And they, you know, he, he, was, he, he literally thought. Now, I'm going to share something with you all. In the book of St. John, if you read in the sixth chapter, Jesus was doing some phenomenal stuff, and they wanted to make him a king. He had to withdraw himself because they're going to make him a king. Now, if they had made Jesus a king, now if he had lost, lost his, his vision, if he had lost mindset of, of assignment, see, you got to understand what you're here to do. Don't, don't step out of your bounds. He knew what he was going to do. Now, if Jesus had to said, well, yeah, y'all make me a king. He had to start fighting the Romans. Who was he going to use to fight the Romans? And a lot of them same jokers that, that got mad with him when he started talking about eating my flesh and drinking my blood would have been his army force. Guess where they would have been? See, that's why you got to watch when folks say, man, oh, man, you the man. Yeah, we with you, man. And then when, when, you, when you step out there in deep water, you look around, you're the only one with a bathing suit on. You're the only one. Everybody's still back in the day with a full, a full dress. <laughs> That's why I tell my elders, don't tell, they tell you, man, you get a church. No, you build me a church and then we'll go in it. You, you, if, if, if it's all that, you build me a church and we'll go in it. A lot of preachers don't went out there listening to folk. They, ain't never, they haven't put foot in their church yet. Blessed are the merciful. Now, so what he did, he began to heal their mind, the way of thinking. The way you think. Church, I want to share something with you. The way we think stink. Amen. Because we've got a lot of mixture stuff in our way we think that ain't good. 
but it was formulated as birth. You grew up. Do you know, going to God, I, I, I was taught growing up, you know, man, don't let nobody punk you. you just, if they, they hit you, you hit them back. I'm reading the Bible, turn the other cheek. Wait a minute. Turn the other cheek or punk out. No, cheek punk. Cheek punk. I ain't punking. See the deal? As much as I've heard it, but see, you got to literally let this saturate the punk mind. See, y'all, look, look, you literally got to move the punk mind out and get the meek. Oh, y'all don't hear me. Because, and it don't come overnight. You stand up there. Lord, save me, save me. All you did was just put a diaper on. You think you done pull pants on? No, when you get up there and get saved, you just got qualified for a diaper and a bottle. Amen. Why do you think they call it the new birth? Oh, gee. They don't call it the new grown walk. But we think it's the new grown. Save me, Lord. He puts a diaper on you and put a bottle under your arm. He said, now learn. And we be, see, now when he say learn, if you're a proud person, you ain't learning because you stupid. See, proudness, I can't hear. How many of you, I've, I've done it myself. Even if I'm wrong. How many ever heard that? Even if I'm wrong. You big idiot. I told y'all, I had to humble myself to listen to my wife. Some of the closest people to you, you don't want them to think you stupid. But you act stupid because you're proud. Oh, Jesus. Look, you, you, you're stupid. But you don't want to act stupid, so you act stupider. <laughs> I'm lost. I'm lost. I knew I was lost. I ain't going to let nobody else know I'm lost. But they knew I was lost because I couldn't tell them where I was at. You see what I mean? So I'm lost. I can't tell them because if I tell them, they're going to think I'm stupid. So I'm like... So you know what I do? I get lost her. <laughs> now I'm real lost. I'm real lost. It's saved. It's nothing worse than being saved. And the Holy Ghost is telling you, repent. See, because unless you repent, he can't talk to you. You can't hear nothing. And I'm saying, oh, Jesus. So I'm out there and I got in the dark. I was out in the dark. I said, Lord, just, I said, Lord, help me. He said, repent. Tell him you're lost. I said, God, if I tell them I'm lost, they're going to think I'm stupid. <laughs> then I thought, <laughs> you stand out here in the dark talking, saying, Lord, I'm lost. You're stupid. <laughs> Go ask somebody where you at. <laughs> I went and got the crew together. I said, we lost. <laughs> no, yeah, we knew it. We, we knew it about 300 miles back. <laughs> Took you that long to figure out. How many ever know? Who would know what I'm talking about? Yeah, Never been there. Yes, sir. That's why you just pray. Huh, the, the, the. So he started, he said, I got to heal your mind. In the book of Romans, the 12th chapter, this is one of my favorite. God bless my heart. He said, I got I to gotta show you something here because he says, in the Romans, the 12th chapter, the first verse, I'm reading, I'm finding this. Glory to God. I should have marked it, but since I know where I'm at. Crystal, you got it up there fast? Yeah. I might well just use your, yeah, I can read mine, I can read mine. I'm, I'm proud of it. <laughs> Look, I beseech you therefore, brethren. That means I'm beseeching you. Come on, man. Gee, many Christmas. I beseech you. How long are we going to keep doing what? How many, do, when you wrong, repent. Stop acting like you all that. Lord, forgive me. Help me. Adam knew he was wrong. Knew it. Looked over at Eve. I know he wanted to smack the apple out of her mouth. No, no. It wasn't the apple. It was the fruit. Yeah, y'all looking at me like you. Well, you done messed up. They're going to throw us out the garden. And, but he wouldn't repent. He would not repent. 
And because he wouldn't repent, see, God knows, God, thanks. do you know, how many know what I'm talking about? You were so locked in you, you would, it took you a while to repent. Holy Spirit moving, hovering over you, you sitting in the church. You know you wrong, you sitting there. Then you start coming up with everybody, he ain't all that, and she ain't all that. Devil, the devil is slick. He is a liar from the pit. He start picking out people in the church. Yeah, I ain't going up there because, hey, he, he, who do he think he is? Who do they think they are? Who do they? Don't you know the devil is the accuser? Y'all better listen to this. The devil is the accuser of the brethren. So he's using you to accuse, and you become just like him. When you start accusing folk, he is the, he's the epitome of, a, of accusation. He up there right now. Simmons up there preaching. He ain't all that. Jesus looking at him, you big idiot, get up out of here. Well, ain't got nothing to do with Simmons. Don't you know, he goes and he, he keeps going. For each and every one of y'all, he goes up. Because that's what he does, and he's gonna keep doing it till the end comes. When you locked in pride, and he is the ball of pure pride, 100% plus. He is just ignorant in what he does. He, that's what he does. But he makes us as ignorant when we chide in with him. Oh God, help me, help me. Look, I beseech the brother by the mercy of God that you do what? A what? What? And? Come on, God, hear that T.I. talk. Yeah, the T.I. hollered at you. Why is it so difficult? Why is it? Y'all help me here. I want somebody to talk to me. Talk to me. I can get up at 5 o'clock to go to work. I'll never forget it. My mind was set for 20 years, 20 plus to 19 years. At 5 o'clock, between 5.30, boop. Now I know I got to get to work because I got to get to work. I got a guy waiting for me. I got to swap over. Now I'm thinking, Jesus, I don't, really don't want to go, but I got to go. Uh -huh. I'm driving. I get there and go through my duration. Why is it when Sunday school time come, y'all get locked in uniqueness? Y'all, listen, t let me tell you, God is not going to look at near one of y'all and thank you for taking, for working your job. He's not. He's going to say, you ain't thank me for allowing you to go to work. Right. Sunday school time come, and y'all know it's a Sunday school time. All of y'all, every one of y'all in here, the baby's upstairs. Every one of y'all, you're like this. Sunday, here's what happens. A lazy, tired spirit hits you like it never hit you before. Saturday, I'm up. Countdown, here I come. Berlin auction, woo! I'm the first one there. I'm gonna get me a hot pretzel. I'm gonna get me a sausage with a little, oh, you know the deal. Saturday morning, and the kids are even up watching early morning cartoons. Am I right? Come on, y'all. Am, am I in your house? Am I with you? you, you Sunday truth. morning? Does my wife know? She says, I said, babe, what time is it? She says, seven o'clock. Man, man, the elder can take over. <laughs> Carolyn and Fred's there praying. I'll get there. Whoa. Y'all think, come on, y'all. Sunday, why is, what do you think's going on in the back? You have demons, that's a sign. Wham, well, man, you better get on them. And you laying there and he pressing. He got right here. I'm so tired. Jesus, feel like I done worked two weeks. <laughs> Who preaching? <laughs> well, I guess I better get up and go. I'll get up and go. I want to share something with you all. You need to hear this. God is going to, see, he, he said, he that draw near to me, I draw near to you. See, but the thing of it is, he wants to know where your heart's at. Oh, y'all, I wish you could hear this. I wish you could hear this. See, when you get eager for God, God gets eager for you. Y'all don't, yeah, yeah, look, 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 look. Could you imagine, could you imagine 
God tells you, you got to go. And I want you overseas. See, because when you get an eager heart, he'll do stuff that, that just blow you away. I want you to go and go overseas. Oh, okay, Lord. And then while you're going overseas, I'm going to shipwreck you. I'm going to shipwreck you. You ain't going to die, but you're going to shipwreck. Now I'm going to put you on an island, snake going, you're going to reach for wood. A snake going to bite you, but you ain't going to die. Huh? And you're going to be locked up. We're gonna, I'm going to lock you up. You're going to have to be there for years. Do you know what kind of heart and mind you better have to do that? But you better know something. He wrote more books than anybody in the Bible. See, because God wants to trust. Uh, Y'all don't hear me. He wants to trust somebody. But he ain't going to trust you if you're tired. Y'all, y'all don't, I wish y'all could hear this. Now I'm, I'm going to move you up a little higher. He said, look, look, look. Be not conformed to what? This world, but be what? By that what? Now go ahead. That you may? Only way you're going to renew your mind is the word. That's the only way you're going to renew it. It's the only way. I'm telling you. Faith cometh by hearing. and hearing by. The word of God. I have made it a, 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 a commitment. I want to hear God's voice. Now, I got 62 years of stuff. I got tapes. I got some old tapes. I'm trying to. They, the matter of fact, they done switched them over to uh, DVDs now. They were, they were eight tracks. They were real to real. <laughs> I tried to burn them up, but they ain't going nowhere. Them jokers are still there. They done switched them over to DVD. How many know what I'm talking about? How many got them old tapes? You go back. Oh, Jesus. I told you, you start playing that oldie music, that CD will come on. It's DVD now. Woo! Skating ring. The skating ring was an eight track. <laughs> that was eight track. But that joke is DVD now. You, I, I can play that. But now here's what I found. I can erase those tapes. Y'all don't hear me. I wish somebody knew what I was talking about. You can erase the tapes. Don't let nobody, don't let the devil fool you. Because here's what he does. He will get in your mind and set up a strong area. And all of us got strong areas. I don't know what your area is, but you got one. He sets up in there. He don't mind you saved. Because saved, see, he don't mind you going to hell. He mind, but he can't stop you. He can't stop you from going to heaven. If he could, he would. But he can sure enough mess up your journey. Oh, glory to God. He can mess your journey up. He can make your journey so miserable that you think you, you living in hell. I've heard people say, I got hell right here. No, you don't. But you feel like it. Everything you reach, glory to God, turned to hellish. I can't do nothing. House all broke. Everybody but I'm here to let you know that word will straighten that situation out. Because what it is is to change your way of thinking. As a man thinketh in his heart, so is he. If you think you ain't no good, you will act no good. But you change your way. God bless my heart. Jesus began to change people's way of thinking. And here's how he did it. He sent his word. Sent his word, what did he do? Sent his word, 107, and did what? Heal. God, I need healing. I've been hurt. Some stuff, I want to tell you what, I still got in my, I want to show you something. I thought, I, I said, I'm okay in this area. I feel pretty good. And God let me have a dream. He let me have a dream and showed me in my dream, you ain't okay. I said, oh, man. How many know what I'm talking about? When you think you're sharp, he'll, he'll show you. And then you will know it's him because you'll feel it. Oh. Oh. He sent the dream and I saw it. I'm like, okay, God. He said, he said son, he said, you're, you, you'll never be all you think you can be outside of me. Y'all listen to me. You'll never be what you think you can be outside of him. You can get, you, God bless your heart, and every one of, every, every single young lady that want to get married want a good man. Ain't one, ain't one young lady, if you set up and say, I want a no good man, then we better lay you on the altar and keep praying for you for a long time. And don't let you get married. That's the thing we don't want you to do. We don't want you to get married. Every young lady, every young man want a good young lady. Well, men don't even think, think, think that way. They, they want a good young lady, but it's like, man, it's, it's nine to one now, Jesus. Nine to one. Woo! 
It was seven to one. We done cranked it up some. They done locked up two some more brothers. So now they done made God more brothers than went to jail. So now, amen. And a brother that think he's something, boy, you got to watch it because he walk in pride. You need me. I don't need you. <laughs> and young ladies, let brothers do it. You let <laughs> any young lady worth her godly wisdom would not let a man lay up on her. No, she wouldn't. If you gonna stay, you and leave, if you gonna, you going to work, you gonna know you ain't driving my car unless you got gas money, and you gonna pay me to drive it. Not, not, young ladies, pardon me, but when I see a young lady, a guy sitting in her car driving, you know, and he ain't got a car, and he always in her car, something wrong. And now here's what's the shame about it. And chances are he's going to tear your car up. He'll tear your car up and go to somebody else. Can I tear your car up? He don't say it, but... See, you got, you, God bless your hearts. You got to focus. Bam. Find a good brother in the church. Look around. And say, I want a brother like that brother. Talk. Get around. Talk. talk. Now, here's the misconception. Ain't none. You're lying. That's a lie from the pits of hell. Ain't no good men out there. You must be blind. Oh, y'all don't hear me. Such is word to heal us. If you're looking more for a man than you're looking for God, you don't need a man. Because you're in trouble. You, y'all don't hear. If you're looking for a woman more than you're looking for God, you're in trouble. Because he'll give you somebody, but you'll find out it ain't. Because here's our misconception. As a man thinketh in his heart, so is he. You already got it formulated who you want. Hair. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. Now, God, gee, <laughs> y'all don't hear me. I wish you could hear this. God takes your eyes and change your vision. I wish you could see me. He changes your vision, and what you see is God's plan. I wish somebody heard it. He, you see God's plan for your life. You were talking to folk. What you think? Oh, Jesus, baby. He's, he's dark and ugly. Oh, Jesus. Oh, he's dark and ugly. Oh, God, help me here. Look at his lips. He got big lips. Oh, God, big lips. I'm going to hear that all the way down the altar. No, this isn't. Listen, listen, listen. How would you feel? How would you feel? God walk up. He, he pulls this. Prophet decide, brother by the name of Amos said, why don't you go marry that prostitute? What? Oh. Huh? Gomer. What? You want me to marry what? He said, I want you to go marry her because there's a reason. Go do it. What did he do? Go marry the prostitute. Yeah. See, you got to understand God has a plan so great for your life that when you walk out of this thing, you won't even, oh, you better listen to this. This, this God, man, I was reading in the book of St. Matthew, and he said, here's what, look at this, look at the fourth chapter. Fourth chapter of the book of St. Matthew. Nobody else have ever done this. No one, no one, no one. You can go from Genesis all the way up to this book. Look at what it says. Look, and his fame went throughout, this is 4 and 24, and his fame went throughout all Syria, and they brought what? What'd they bring? So what'd they bring? What? What? And? And? And those? A lot of lunatics. We got a lot of lunatics. Oh, Jesus. And those that had what? And he did what? All of them. All of them. He's the only one ever done it. He was the, the epitome of healing sickness. Why? Because he was the word he was sent to do what? Heal. He, he, he was sent to heal. And he did it. Boom. Everything around him, heal. If you deserve to be healed or not, heal. He didn't say, you know, you ain't no good. And matter of fact, 
He, he did more for the folk that the church didn't like than anybody. That prostitute up there, glory to God, they said, hey, what do you think, Jesus? You tell us what you think you, we should do. Well, they knew the law. If you read the book, they should stone that woman. Jesus said, yeah, but let's do this here. Every one of y'all should have been stoned. You, they've been throwing stones. Everybody get hit with a stone. That's the end of church. See, church folks, let me tell you something. Don't ever get to the place where you're self-righteous. See, you're not self-righteous. You're made righteous by him. You become self-righteous, you're in trouble. Because you start thinking, do you think, start thinking, who you, who am I? Oh, man, I'm not like that publican over there. I'm like, like a bum. The only thing saving you from being a bum is grace. You could be right there in the gutter. Nebuchadnezzar up there, the sharpest thing going at that time. What did he tell him? You're going to eat grass like a, like a donkey. He out there eating grass. Hair, nails grew. When he woke up, he said, there's only one God. Oh, glory to God. One stroke can take you out. You'll be laying in a bed of affliction. Oh, glory to God. That's why y'all better listen to this. Praise him every chance you get. Because, oh, I wish you heard this. As great as George Washington was, you can go to Mount Vernon and see some of his paraphernalia. He gone. Every great man. The Bible talks about it. The Bible said you'll leave your money to someone else. So I've learned, I've learned, I want, look, look, church, I'm going to share this with you. Get in that word and change your mind. Let him heal your mind. Heal my mind, God. Heal my mind. The way I think. Oh. And, the, and you can tell when, you, when God is moving because the devil start cranking the heat. He start trying to tempt you in area. You get away from, now say if you was a, a user or whatever, he'll crank that heat. You walk away from it, he say, okay, you, you got me this time, but oh, you're coming back. And he's subtle because you'll be minding your own business. Somebody will walk up with a bag. Hey, man, you know I ain't never got a free bag. Hey, hey man, here. I, I had a couple of bags hanging around. I want to lay this one on you. Oh, ain't nothing but pure, un unadulterated devil. You're a womanizer. You done broke this. I'm good. Man, women would be walking around you. Oh, Jesus. Sweet. And then all of a sudden you say, God, I knew that. See, you got to, God will get your mind focused. Do you know? Church, y'all listen to me. Do you know how many women had to come after Jesus? Y'all never thought about that, did you? Never, never even think about that. No, ain't nobody going to mess with Jesus. Were well, you kidding me? When popularity come. So come the clan. What they call it? Fan club. All, the, all these brothers got fan club. They even, now they're talking about it. I can't go nowhere. They go to rooms and women are lined up at the door. Now you know you better be a good brother. You know what I'm talking about. I'm talking gospel too. Y'all. These gospel players and musicians, women lined up at the door. And they're not there for autographs. They want to take a good brother down in a New York minute. Good sister down. Amen. So we are learning. So you, and I'm going to tell you what, church. I've, I made a solemn. I said, because I'm a KYW man. I like listening to the weather. And every time I turn it on, they came, tell me the same thing. But I just get hooked. I got myself Bible tapes. But I told y'all, I go to sleep, my ears a little, I gotta give me a different set of earphones, but it don't even matter. I am bombarding my head with the word. God, I gotta bombard myself. You do what you gotta do. I don't know, you might be already there. Who knows, but I know I'm not. Another thing, another top secret that the devil's a liar from the pit. Don't leave home without prayer. Amen. Don't you, if you got to grab the cat's paw, you're the only one in there praying. Pray! Pray! 
Grab these babies before they go off to school. Y'all better listen to me. You grab these babies before they get off to school and pray. You letting them go out there in that world without prayer. We're crazy. Grab them babies. Well, I, they got to rush off to school. Well, how would you like to get a, a report they ain't coming back home? Y'all right. better listen to this. This message is hot off the press. Don't you li God bless my heart. Look, my wife, she's pressing me now. We pray. And the more I pray, the better I feel about her. The better I feel about her, I'm praying. And then all of a sudden, now yesterday, I've hit Grand Avenue and Williamstown Road. I, I, well, I live there. I pull up, car sitting there, I'm looking. Now I said, you know what, they're waiting. Let me hit this turn, because they're waiting. For, hit the turn. So I'm waiting. waiting. I hit the turn. Now I hit the turn. I'm looking. This gray car came from the trees, because I sure enough didn't see it. Here come this gray car. What in the world? Church. I, I'm, you know I'm standing on holy ground, ain't got no reason to lie to you, nor make it up. Seemed like my car was just moved, like this. The car went in front of me, right? And it's as if I saw a hand of an angel, y'all better look out here, like an angel, oh God, help me in this house. I don't leave home without no weapon formed against me to be prosper every tongue that rises in judgment. But now I pray traveling mercy over everybody. God, when we hit this road, give us traveling mercy. Stead the hand of death. And my God, God just, look, that big old, that big old Mercedes, thank God it didn't have the pep to kick off. I don't know, but look, that big old car, and me and that joker was running, he running the, uh, the right lane, I'm running the left. He went, I looked at this lady, I said, When I was riding, you know what he did though? Here's what God said. God told me just a good. He said, now I want you to listen and look. See, I'm, I'm here, but I want you to start paying attention to your driving. Don't take this lap. I'm, I'm, oh, y'all know, y'all know, y'all know. Texting, cell phones, everything. God said, no. God said, I'm slowing you. I'm doing this so you know. So you know. Remember he told that woman? Here's what he told her. He says, he said, look, after David didn't stone her, he said, go and sin no more. That means don't do that again. Next time I won't be there. But prayer. Oh, Jesus. Don't, don't you leave home without pray And pray, touch and agree with somebody. If the baby's in the crib. Lay your hand on the baby's head. Nobody else want to pray. But don't send these babies out in this. Oh, Jesus. Oh, these corridors in this school is hellacious. These kids are walking these corridors. They're not children. They might be big, small baby bodies, but their minds, oh, Jesus. They done passed grown folk. They curse like, oh, oh, God bless their hearts. They just, and they're hateful, hateful. I mean, we were tough, but now they are hateful. And they, they pride, they pray on the weak. They pray on those that are different. They pray on them. And then the weak want to change to be something they're not. You tell me you better make your baby feel comfortable at the house. That baby better be home and that baby better know I can go home. I ain't got to worry about this dumb stuff. I'm going home. But if they ain't got nothing at home, never seen so. God, that means he's soon to come. But I'm going to tell you what, church. Your mind's got to be steadfast, unmovable. Get your mind off of you. My God. Amen. I'm telling y'all hear me. Y'all, I know y'all looking at me. What in the world? Start getting, it ain't about you all the time. Not about you. If it was about, if Jesus came down here and said, I ain't dying for these trifling, no good jokers. Hey, <laughs> Remember, he had a man, God, thank God for Moses, had, a, had enough God in him because God said, I'll kill them all and make a tribe with you. Moses said, Lord, please. <laughs> you know, God, when God get hot, 
He said, but for a man to go before God and intercede like he did, he said, God, don't kill him. He said, will you do that and take my name out the book? Well, he knew God wasn't going to do that. But church, I'm telling, God bless my heart. It's 2 o'clock. Oh, no. I'm going to say, if it's 2 o'clock, I'm going to preach to 3. If that's 2 o'clock, I'm preaching to 3. Uh, move this. I know, I, I know, I know, now I know the devil's going to challenge us. He challenges. But see, the challenge is, comes to those who are serious about doing what God would have them do. He ain't going to challenge you if he know you, you ain't, if you ain't about it. You are, and, but here's the thing. Are you prepared for the cup coming down the road? There's a reason God gave me this message. Are we prepared for what's coming down the road? How many of us could raise our hand and say, if I had the money that I've thrown away, I'd be in good shape right now. If I had the money I've thrown away, I mean, just wasted. Some of I don't even know where it's at. If I had the money I wasted, Jesus, Jesus, send the money back, Lord. Here's what he said. He said, I come to restore the years that the canker worm is eating. How many of you would like to have some of that good money back? This message God has given in my spirit to tell us he's come to heal us, man. He's really come to heal us. He's going to heal a lot of that stuff that then went down the pike. He's going to bring, look, look, I am a true believer that God said this. I'm standing on this holy ground to believe this. He said he will make me the lender and not the borrower. That doesn't mean that church y'all come and start hitting me up for money. That's not what it means. Here's what it means. Here's what it means. Glory to God. I have so much it doesn't even bother me. And when I give, listen to me. Do you know the bank loans money? And the only reason they loan money because they know they're going to make money on the money they loan. Y'all, don't, y'all didn't hear that. They ain't going to give money to people that they know they ain't going to get money from. But they give money. What? Am I right? Just to share this right quick. Church cost us $300,000. 2098 99, we walked in. Remember, we walked in this church in 99 of March, owing $270,000. That's what we owe. Glory to God. And, and we start paying $2,500 a month. Ten years later, ten years later, we paid the bank $230,000 to refi it. Did that make sense to y'all? Y'all listen, listen. I paid that man $250,000 to let me use this church for ten years. See, God will make me the lender. And not, y'all don't hear, I wish you could hear this. In 10 years, I refi it for 230, right? Bingo. So now we get a brilliant analogy. Let's pay this thing off. They're, just, they're beating us. So the bank, and four years later, comes back and says, y'all did real good. Y'all did real good. But you still owe us 180, but you, and you've only given us 19,000 in four years. Now, here's what I've come out of this analogy. God said, I'll give you that money. See, I want you to be the person that can walk up to a church and say, look, you ain't got to worry about it. Look, give me 5%. No, give me 4%. I'm going to bless you. See, y'all, are y'all listening to me? He wants somebody he can trust to say, I can switch this thing. Because then he say in the Bible that the, people, the children of the world are smarter than us. And that's, oh, y'all didn't hear this. I wish you could read it. It's in there. So I'm saying, Lord, I don't want to be getting hoodwinked. My, a house, a $100,000 house end up costing you 300000 God said, I want to make you that person. Y'all, did, y'all, did y'all hear that? But he's got to have a person with a mind that is locked. Peter walks over to him. He says, I was hit up. They said, do we pay taxes? Jesus said, well, who collects that? Do the children of the world pay? And he said, well, the children of the world. He said, but so we don't offend, go fishing. He said, now, when you fish, you, you won't have enough money for me and you. Now, I'm going to share something else with y'all, because so, y'all, y'all didn't know this. When those wise men came to Jesus, they didn't bring a little box. 
They brought enough money for Jesus to live till he was four years old, five or six years, seven years old. I don't know. He was old enough. When he went to Egypt, you ain't read Joseph worked. Oh, y'all didn't hear that. <laughs> Joseph didn't work when he went to Egypt. They went in with some bank. Because those white y'all didn't hear this. These wise men came with donkey load, man. Yeah. They, do you think they're going to go that far with a little box? Here, we done, we done went a thousand miles. Here's a little box. No, they came with a lot of bank. You, you notice, I'm going to bless you again. This is quick. Jesus told the disciples, he's, here's what he told them. 5,000 folk out there, he said, feed them. He said, feed them. They looked around, and, and here's us. Where are we going to get all this money from to feed these folk? Jesus said, so. we, didn't, we didn't collect it. I know, I know, we good. You could. Now, if they had said, we'll do it, Lord, they'd have did it. Y'all ain't hear that. Jesus looked up and said, Father, so they can see. Let me go ahead and do this for them. Now, here's what's going to blow your mind. A man, God man, but a man, had enough faith in God to do it. I said to myself, I got to get to a place in God. Y'all elders, y'all hear me. I got to get to a place in God where I can hear that. Y'all, you got to get to a place where you can hear God in a business move. God will speak to you and he'll direct you and you'll be the lender and not the borrower. You'll be the one walking in here saying, you need a car, baby, go on out there. There's a brand new one out there waiting for you. See, are y'all... See, I said to myself, I got to get to a level where I can start walking in the God mind stuff. God never been, he did, Jesus did not merely mouth one time, nor did his apostles. And ain't, ain't no about no hoodwinking. I'm listening to TBN, and this is just quick. Man had a vision. Jan and, and uh, Paul started with that one station. They got so many stations, it's scary. You just got so many stations, just stations. But here's what I said to myself. I said, here's a man that trusted God to do. I said, Lord, I can't, can I trust you to pay off a $180,000 note? What in the world am I doing? Wait, wait a minute. Am I focused? What's up here? And so I said, God said, L listen to me, son. Listen to me. It's there. All you got to do is know how to tap into it. But if you don't know me the way you should, you ain't going to tap into it. Because I am not going to destroy you the way you are. Y'all understand, listen, I'm going to tell you, the way you are, God is not going to mess you up trying to trust you. He gotta, you got to trust him so he can trust you. And the only way you can get there, you got to grow in him. Amen. Let's stand, stand and just pray. We've got communion coming. Did y'all hear that? Amen. Don't you merely, don't you merely